is on point and welcome to this week's Bhutan This Week, our weekly news magazine program. I'm Kiza Wangmo. Our top stories this week. His Holiness the Jay Kempo presides over Sangye Minle Dupchen. New autonomous agency to deliver clinical services launched as part of Health Ministry's transformation. And ECB begins preparations for upcoming National Council elections. His Holiness the Jay Kempo presided over a nine day Sangye Minle Dupchen at the Namjolin Gins in Datsa at Outso in Lindsay. More than 200 monks from the Datsa are presiding, are reciting the prayers. It is being held to suppress the COVID 19 pandemic and for world peace. This year, the people of Shadage are organizing the Dupchen. The Dupchen concluded today with the recitation of Ngedu Plawa. The Deje Lebe of Jung Datsang has appointed three new lums of Tiffin Hakas and the Jung Datsang's new secretary. The new appointees were conferred Kader by the Deje Lebe at the Punakazong on Wednesday. 35-year-old Kencho Doji from Teowang Gyok in Punaka is the new lum of the Gedul Haka in Chukha. Prior to his present post, he served as a teacher at the Kurutang Monastic School in Punaka. He began his journey as a monk at the age of eight. He studied at the Tango Buddhist University in Thimpu and also at the Buddhist University in Varanasi, India. 39-year-old Tauchu from Kaji Gyok in Wangdi Fodrang has been appointed as the new lum of the Shemaka Sonamji Lakhang in Chapcha. Prior to his appointment, he was a teacher at the Talakha Monastic School. He started his monkhood at the age of 10. He studied at various shedras including the Seula Shedra in Punaka, Sanchin Chekur in Paro, and Tango University in Tempo. 28-year-old Chado from Atangyog in Wangdifodrang is the new lum of the Lungka Tsalhaka in Shengana, Punaka. He was previously a teacher at the Seogang Monastic School in Nisho, Wangdifodrang. He became a monk at the age of 10 and is a graduate of the Sanchukur Shedra in Paro. And 48-year-old Sangi Chofel from Summer Gyok in Ha has been appointed as the new secretary of the Central Monastic Party. Prior to his current appointment, he served as the assistant secretary of the Central Monastic Party. He studied at the Tango Shedra in Thimpu and also worked as a teacher at the Dejin Fodrang Central Monastic School in Thimpu. For Changa Doji in Punaka, this is Pasung Doji for BBS News. The Kidu Mobile Medical Unit team has resumed its free medical services at Bodh Gaya after a gap of three years amid the pandemic. Thousands of pilgrims gather every year at the sacred Buddhist pilgrimage center to attend the teachings of the Dalai Lama. The team began its medical services on 4th December and will continue till the end of next month. The Kidu Medical Team in Bodh Gaya has been set up at the Royal Bhutanese Temple at Bodh Gaya. The medical unit was first started in December 2016 upon the royal command of His Majesty the King. However, it was discontinued after the onset of the pandemic. Every month, a team consisting of a doctor, a nurse and a pharmacist take turns providing medical services. This year, a team flew to set up the unit in December. As of today, 267 patients have availed themselves of the health services. Among the patients, the oldest was an 88-year-old male and the youngest was a 2-year-old. Health officials say the majority of the patients are above the age of 50. Some of the common problems faced by Bhutanese are respiratory problems associated with dust and cold. The medical unit also receives patients with acute gastritis due to the food they consume. People with minor accidents such as bruises and aches also visit the health facility. In addition, most people with chronic diseases like hypertension and diabetes come to collect medicines when they run out of stock. However, the medical team refers patients who are severely ill either back to Thimpu or Kolkata as the medical unit only carries medicines to cover real emergencies. We manage the patient. And then most patients, if it's really acute, they pay themselves the treatment, cost of treatment, because it is not in our referral area territory. Our referral area is to Calcutta. So on the other side, if we can stabilize the patient, we send the patient back to Bhutan. We arrange the transport. And from Paro, uh, patient is picked up by ambulance and they bring to Thimpu and treat here. 
Furthermore, the medical team recommends pilgrims be well prepared before they leave for the trip. I would like to request uh, all the concerned authorities and uh, people going for pilgrimage, especially even by the local government, by the Gups and Chok, uh, Chokpa and uh, Mangia, all that they can implement that people who go for insurance uh, for going for pilgrimage to India should have a health insurance. Mandatory, they should have a health insurance so that if they get sick in India, they can use the health insurance money to cover the treatment. The team is anticipating over a thousand people to benefit from the service by the end of the camp. Devikrapadan, BBS News. Dr. Lutitz Ring launched the health sector transformation on Monday. The transformation is expected to significantly enhance the health services in the country. It also outlines clear responsibilities and accountabilities. A new agency called National Medical Services has been formed to deliver clinical services across the country. Henceforth, the Ministry of Health will have the mandate for policy regulation, policy and regulation. And the service delivery, the implementation will be the mandate of the new agency, the National Medical Services. That will mandate, uh, that agency will have the mandate to provide services across the country. Then ministry will focus only on resource mobilization, on policies and on uh, standards and regulations. Through this transformation, there will be clear responsibilities and accountabilities. Before transformation, both policy, regulation, service deliveries is all being done by various uh, agencies and it's under the mandate of Ministry of Health. Today through the transformation what we are doing is we are delineating these responsibilities, establishing a clear channel of uh, uh, accountability uh, and mandate. The five erstwhile departments under the Ministry of Health have been reduced to two departments, the Department of Public Health and the Department of Health Services. The erstwhile Bhutan Agriculture and Food Regulatory Authority, Bhutan Narcotics Control Authority and Drug Regulatory Authority have been merged under Bhutan Food and Drugs Authority. The authority was also launched today as a part of the health sector transformation. Devikrapadan, BBS News. Over the past five years, the country has seen a drastic increase in the number of people dealing with depression and anxiety. And according to the annual Health Bulletin 2022, the numbers doubled in the past two years due to the COVID-19 pandemic and its restrictions. From lockdowns to quarantine and isolation, the COVID-19 pandemic took a toll on the lives of people. As poor health experts, these factors significantly affected the mental well-being of people. According to the National Referral Hospital's annual report 2021, the hospital recorded more than 340 cases of depression during the second lockdown in 2020. As per the record, the majority of them were new cases. To provide support for those affected by the COVID-19 pandemic, a national mental health response team was established in 2020. The team also saw a drastic increase in the callers seeking help related to mental health issues. And according to the annual health bulletin 2022, the number of depression cases increased from over 500 in 2017 to more than 2,400 in 2021. Similarly, in 2017, more than 1,000 people suffered from anxiety and in 2021, the number crossed 4,000. Among the mental health disorders that we saw during the pandemic, the most common, common was actually uh, anxiety related. So it was panic disorder or uh, generalized anxiety or people showing some symptoms of fear and anxiousness. Uh, and then the second obviously was depression. Many people went into depression. 
And we all also had people who were drawing from drugs and alcohol and because they were not able to access those and um, they had a very difficult time. Dr. Nirula added that a person develops mental disorders due to three factors, biological, environmental and psychological. He added that most of the mental health disorders reported during the pandemic time were because of environmental factors such as the implementation of restrictions and lockdowns. According to the World Health Organization, a huge number of people have reported psychological distress and symptoms of depression, anxiety or post-traumatic stress due to the pandemic. And this has caused an increase in the cases like anxiety and depression, worsening mental health conditions. However, after the relaxation of COVID-19 restrictions, Dr. Nirula said the number of people seeking help from the psychiatry department has decreased, although the hospital has yet to compile the data. When somebody has a strong biological, uh, biological predisposition to have a mental disorder, they may not break down until a situation occurs. So sometimes the, the pandemic could have actually triggered that and they can continue to uh, suffer from mental illness. According to reports, the impact of COVID could be felt for years and some psychiatrists even say that it will take at least a generation to recover from the mental trauma people experienced during the pandemic. Gurmasam Tenwanda for BBS News. The JDWNRH in Thimpu is planning to conduct knee replacement surgeries on about 20 more patients. This is following the success of the first such surgery in the country. The hospital said the patient is now able to walk properly less than two weeks since undergoing the surgery. Such cases were referred to India till now and involved huge costs. 66-year-old Sringlamo from Lunana in Gaza underwent the total knee replacement surgery on 30 December. The surgery lasted about an hour and a half. Today, Sring says she is able to walk freely without much pain unlike before. Prior to the surgery, Sring says she had difficulty moving around on a daily basis. But now she says things have improved. I was in a difficult situation. I couldn't go anywhere. It was painful for me even while cooking. I had pain when sitting down or getting up. A total knee replacement surgery is normally carried out on people with worn out or injured knee joints and involves removing the damaged joint and replacing it with a man-made artificial joint. Eleven days after her surgery, Tsring said it has relieved her of the pains she had in her knees. It has been so many years since I had pain in my knees. I couldn't go outside for surgery due to the pandemic. Due to my good fortune, the doctors treated me here and my hopes are fulfilled. Tsring will be undergoing another operation on her left knee, which also needs to be replaced. However, this will be done once she is fully recovered and once the hospital receives additional artificial knee joints. For now, Tsring will have to stay at the hospital until she is fully recovered. One day after the surgery, we told her how to move her leg slowly. This will help the leg to move more easily with the prosthetic. Every day we stayed with the patient and taught her exercises that would help her walk properly. Currently she is able to walk on her own and at times our physiotherapy team helps her. She eats her meals on time and does her exercises to her best. And due to this, she is able to bend and stretch to some extent. However, there is a little pain when she does that. Other than that, things are going good. So far, the hospital has registered about 20 patients for total knee replacement surgery. The JDWNRS said that if the first patient recovers without any health issues, they will be carrying out surgeries on about two patients every week. Performing knee replacement surgeries in the country is expected to help the government save money. The government would have to spend around 250,000 newton on each patient referred to India for such surgeries. For Chiang Adawa, Namgidema for BBS News.
When the border gates closed due to COVID-19, the number of drug-related cases in the country dropped significantly in the last three years. However, with border gates now open, drug trafficking cases in the country are on the rise yet again. According to records with the police, drug cases more than doubled in 2022 compared to the previous year. The police recorded more than 720 drug cases in 2022. Only 290 drug cases were registered in the previous year. Likewise, the number of individuals arrested for such cases also doubled last year. More than 1,500 individuals were arrested for various drug-related cases in 2022. Police say most of the suspects were youth. The police attributed easy access to drugs due to the border gate reopening in the south for the sudden increase. As in the past, the most smuggled drug was SP+. The drug case offenses included substance abuse, illicit trafficking, and illicit possession of narcotics and psychotropic substances. Police records showed that Thimpu, Finsoling, and Paru districts had the highest number of drug-related cases reported so far. Police said that they were able to intercept most of the cases with the help of informers and through constant patrolling. According to the police, substance abuse is one of the top five prevalent crimes in the country today. Tashiangden, BBS News. In preparation for the upcoming National Council election, the Election Commission of Bhutan has conducted voter education and is currently updating the electoral rule and providing dispute settlement training. We have done the voters' uh, education, and for voters' education, we have done a, a TOT training for the trainers to all the 20 Tonkaks, uh, led by the three uh, commissioners. Following which, we also have trained all our Zonkok electoral registration officers on the BIRMS, that is Bhutan electoral rule system, and uh, which is one of the most important documents that uh, for uh, uh, credible elections. We have divided ourselves into three groups led by the election commissioners and we are into the Zonkaks doing dispute settlement training. The Bhutan Council for School Examinations and Assessments Evaluation Camp is a sought-after activity by teachers across the country. It is an active engagement for teachers during the long winter break. However, some teachers claim that not everyone gets the opportunity to be a part of the camp. They say while some get it every year, for a few others, it's difficult to be part of the evaluation despite being in the teaching profession for more than 10 years. Annually, over a thousand teachers from across the country get selected for the evaluation camp. For a teacher to participate in the evaluation, respective schools will register online on the BIGSA system. Although the nominations are done at the school level, the selection is done by the BIGC. More than a thousand teachers have been selected from across the country for 2022 BIGSA's evaluation camp this year. However, some teachers BBS talked to expressed their disappointment in not getting the opportunity. A few of the teachers who requested anonymity said there is confusion among the teachers about the selection process. According to BIGC's criteria, the minimum work experience should be three years. However, some have never gotten the opportunity despite being in service for 10 years. Some get the opportunity right after three years of experience. So we are not able to understand how the selection is done. When it comes to the selection of teachers for the Big C evaluation, I feel that it is not fair and equitable. Some teachers who were in the profession for about 10 years have never been part of the evaluation. While some get the opportunity after two or three years of service, moreover some get the opportunity multiple times and some don't get it at all. From what I've heard, those who have connections with Big C make calls and get the opportunity to go for the evaluation every year. Moreover, this year, the names of teachers teaching classes 8, 10 and 12 were submitted. While a few of them get the opportunity, some don't. So we don't know on what basis they are selected. However, according to Bixi, the selection is done based on the nomination criteria. Bixi has four criteria, 
A teacher should have a minimum of three years of teaching experience and should be currently teaching in classes 8, 10 and 12. The teacher should not have any adverse records, among others. We don't have any preferences. Uh, so we, as uh, for usually for class uh, 10, we give for three consecutive times. After three years, then we give preference to the next. There are some uh, exceptional, like in the languages, like in Zongka in English, we record lots of uh, teachers. So that time we don't uh, go strictly with the criteria, so they can be selected again or they can be selected even though they are not teaching the class uh, 8, 10 and 12. He added that the teacher is selected more than three times only during times of shortage, especially for those teaching class 12. We give preference uh, for three times, but when there are lots of, uh, uh, lots of nomination from schools, then we give chance only to one teacher from one school so that all school gets the equal opportunity. If there are two senior teachers in the same school, then uh, we give only preference to one. We the evaluation for classes 8, 10, 12 and language and cultural studies certificate began today in Gilifu. It will be carried out in three different schools in the district. The results for classes 8 and 12 are expected to be declared by the end of this month and for class 10, it will be next month. Devika Pradhan, BBS News. The defending champions, Paru FC, retained their title as the champions of the BOB Bhutan Premier League 2022. The final match was held at the Changlimithong Stadium on 5th January. The Tigers came out victorious after a 2-1 win over Thimpu City FC. It is their third Bhutan Premier League title since the league's initiation in 2012. A huge crowd gathered to witness the game between the league giants. Both the title contenders have been unbeaten this season, with just four draws for Thimpo City FC and three draws for Paro FC. The two giants dominated the league early on in the season. In the 37th minute of the first half, Tenjo Gelson scored the opening goal for Paro FC. After nine minutes into the second half, Kazuo Homa doubled their lead. With the title, the winners were awarded a cash prize of more than 2 million newtum. The first runners-up were handed 1 million newtum. Similarly, the second runners-up, Druk Hail FC, were given 650,000 newtum. Kazuo Homa, who joined Paro FC in July last year, bagged the most valuable player and a top scorer award with 34 goals for the season. So far, Paro FC has the most number of titles, closely followed by Thimpu City FC with two titles. As per the Bhutan Football Federation, Paro FC will be participating in the Asian Football Confederation Cup, an annual continental club football competition this year. The next BOB Bhutan Premier League season is expected to start in July this year. For Chengatawa, Srindiki, BBS News. And that was this week's edition of Bhutan This Week from me and our team. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.